So now in the first house, we have um, solar eclipse revolution. Um, the first house is the house of the self. <clears throat> so this is your your self, your your um, your self oriented interests. It's your physical body, your vitality, um, and um, basically how you look to others. So your personality and your characteristics and so on. What you project to others as well. Uh, what you actually you know send out. Um, so how they perceive you. This is also about personal independence, how you make your way in the world, um, you know, what you're actually going through on, on a daily basis. So now um, with this card coming in, um, changes are coming. Um, the changes are necessary in order to move you forward. So they will probably be swift. Um, and it's basically the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. So um, you may be uh, required to make a decision at this time. Um and uh, perhaps when you do that, um, you know, then it, then it will create an upheaval. Um, if you are avoiding making a decision, then um, something will be created for you. Um, so, you know, it's a possibility of an, uh, some sort of upheaval where you'll feel out of your comfort zone. It's a rearrangement uh, of what, if, you know, a whole bunch of things going on around you or in your life. Um, but it's basically you. It's self-oriented. Um, you may also be asked to dive in to fix uh, or create something. And when you do that, when you take the initiative and you actually do that, um, you're going to create something much, much better. It's going to be much more rewarding for you. Um, you could also be breaking old patterns. Um, and this card is also about self-mastery. So you're really going to be given um, the impetus to do this now. Um, but it, it will bring in changes for you, and um, they could be very swift indeed. Then um, in the second house, we have Neptune Sacrifice. Your second house is everything to do with your income, your money that's coming in. It's also um, the house of um, your self-worth and your value systems. So what you value in yourself and in others and in your possessions. Um, this is the house of possessions, what you own as well. Um, so it also covers things like real estate um, and uh, land, that sort of thing. So now with Neptune sacrifice coming in, um, you may be a bit unsure about things at the moment. It's almost like there are unknown factors. Things are a bit, um, they're not clear. They're just not clear to you at this time. So you may be feeling a little bit, um, uh, maybe just be feeling a bit adrift, like you're not quite sure what's happening um, at the moment, or you haven't got all the facts in order to make a decision. So there could be a bit of confusion as well about something. Um you, this card is also the card of self-deception, so you may be under some kind of illusion or fantasy as well, uh, so just be aware of that. Um, you may be feeling um, vulnerable um, or that you're under pressure and you just want to escape. You just want to get away from what's going on. Um, all of those things can come in with this card. Self-sacrifice um, also comes in, so you may have to, in order to um, do certain things uh, from a monetary point of view or from a, a real estate point of view, you may just need to do something which will entail some sacrifice of some kind. Or you could be just self-sacrificing your ego in a particular issue. Um, alternatively, you can also be feeling incredibly imaginative, uh, creative, inspired, artistic, uh, and that's artistic uh, pursuits of all kinds as well. So this card has those both both sides of it. So you could be reaching really for incredible um, imaginative and, and, and creative ideas or just be really inspired at this time. Um, but there may also be the other side of it, which is where there's these unknown factors. There's a bit of confusion, a bit of self-deception possibly. Or you may just have to put aside your ego in certain instances in order to make progress in this um, in this house. In the third house, we have Black Moon Lilith uh, Mystery. So your third house has everything to do with your communication. This is how you express yourself um, to others. So this can be verbal, written, it's body language as well. Um, and um, you may also, could also you be receiving messages or hearing things or seeing things in your environment, which, so you're receiving the messages. Um, this house also rules uh, short trips, um, local trips. Um, it also rules interactions with family members like cousins, siblings, aunts, uncles, um, and also your neighbors. Your neighbors can come in on this as well. Um, it's also the house of learning. Um, 
and it's the house of um, it rules all documents and um, contracts because it's written right so all of that can come in on this house so what this is telling you is that um, something's under the surface something's not quite clear to you something's you, it's almost like you're waiting for something to happen something's lurking um, something's kind of stalking almost you're just not sure what it is there's some issue going on or something under the surface something some undercurrent going on um, you may just be feeling a little bit, um, uh, either you're feeling this uh, or you're seeing it in your environment with others that you're interacting with. So this is communication with others in general, but also with those family members and your neighbors even. Um, so just be aware of harboring um, or expressing um, dark emotions. This this card is the dark of feminine, um, but it also brings in um, the difficult emotions like anger envy, bitterness, vengeful thoughts, um, betrayal, um, things like that. Um, so just be aware that this, you know, try and find a healthy outlet for this because this could be something that somebody said something and you've taken offense or you feel slighted in some way um, or you have said something and the other person's uh, exhibiting these emotions, all right? So just be aware of that. Um you could, as I said, you could be on the receiving end of it, or you could be seeing it happening around you. Um, this card also brings in seduction of some kind. So whether this is seduction in words, or whether you're seeing it in your environment, environment, or you're the subject of, you know, you're being seduced in some way, secret affairs, that sort of thing, steamy secret, sort of affairs. Uh, it's kind of hidden. There's a, there's a, there's a darker element to this one. Um, this is a, um, a sort of a, the deeper feminine, the darker feminine. Um, so there could be a female issue involved in a female person involved in any one of these issues that I've described. Um, so um, it, it's the best outcome for this card is about standing strong, not giving up uh, on something which you feel strongly about. Um, it's also about exhibiting self-control. Um, mastery over those dark, that subdued feminine power, you know. Um, so we all have the feminine and the masculine in us. So this is about, um, this is about, um, you know, really, um, getting a firm grip on the, um, the darker, the darker side of the feminine emotions, um, the subdued strength and power. It's, it's about harnessing that. Um, to, to, to ensure that you, you, you know, you're staying strong in what you believe in, but don't let it get out of control and, um, you know, be expressed, uh, you know, in, in sort of around in your environment. Either that or it's coming at you in some way or you're seeing it in your environment. Then in the fourth house, we have, um, Venus, the love card. So now with this card coming in your fourth house is everything to do with your home. So this is your physical home. It's also the atmosphere in your home. It's the people in your home. Just your, your, you know, your, your home in general, wherever it is that you call home. <clears throat> this is also, uh, the fourth house is also the, your relationship with your family tree, your ancestry, your roots, your foundation, where you came from. It's your relationship with that. So now, um, with this card coming in, what it's saying is um, love conquers all. So let love take care of things at this time. Um, you may be strongly uh, wanting to unite with another in some way or form a partnership or a partnership could be coming in for you. It's highly indicated with this card and it's a, it's a beneficial thing as well. Um, you could also be attracting abundance um, and beauty to you or you may be um, asked to create that. So it's creating romance, balance, comfort, harmony. This is in your home life and in your actual home. You, you know, may be wanting to bring beautiful things into your home um, because this card loves beautiful, the, Venus is all about beautiful things and the love of beautiful things and the coveting of that. Um, luxuries, you know, high comfort. So just be aware um, with Neptune that was sitting in your money house, just be aware that you're not splurging on purchases or burning or, or purchasing an, an unnecessary luxury item because you can, can create romance and love and comfort in your home without necessarily um, blowing your money on, you know, expensive purchases, beautiful things that just, um, they're nice to look at, but is it really enhancing you, you know, inside and out? Um, so just that's just a small thing to be aware of. Um, but it, you could also be receiving a windfall of some kind, or you could be um, experiencing a resolution to a money concern or a dispute. Um, that's it could even be a legal dispute of some kind. Um, this can um, bring in new love, 
improvement in love or an old love coming back into your life. Um, this card is also about art, beauty, fashion. Um, so you could be exposed to that in, in your home in some way. You could be perhaps bringing it into your home in some way. Um, but it's also about, it's always about refinement. Venus is always about refinement of whatever's going on, um, being social. So you, you may have more things going on, more people coming to visit you at your home. And it's also about food and comfort and nourishment, all of those lovely, yummy feelings. That's what Venus brings in for you. Then in the fifth house, we have Saturn return age. Um, <clears throat> the fifth house is your house of <coughs> creativity. It's the house of children, your children or other children that you're associated with. Um, and it's the house of love affairs. And it's the house of all um, recreational and fun activities. So it's play, really. Whatever activities, it could even be sports activities. Um, now with Saturn return age coming in, so this is a return. Um, so this implies um, wisdom and experience. That's what you need to apply here in this house um, because that's what Saturn does. Saturn gathers wisdom. It enhances wisdom in you, and you can only gather that over time. So um, this is also about um, taking responsibility uh, for anything, really, in this fifth house. So it's taking responsibility for your own dreams, what you want. Um, or it could be that you're seeing this in your children. Maybe your children need to take responsibility for their dreams. Um, you also need to face any truths head on, anything difficult or, or tricky or something you've been avoiding. You must face all truths uh, with this card. Otherwise, it will it will be, you know, made front and center for you. Um, you need to release what is not working for you at this time. So anything that is not working for you in your fifth house environment, um, you need to release it. Streamlining um, comes in with this card. Streamlining, making things um, work for you. Um, you may also be seeing through an, an old illusion that you've had about something. So something, you, you always saw something uh, being a certain way and now you're seeing that it's not actually that at all. So it's a kind of a disappointment. Um, so you're seeing through this illusion that you were under, uh, seeing th something for what it is. Um, this card is all, always about solid achievement, um, and it's, it wants it to be permanent in your life. Um, and you can only reach solid achievement by having very strong foundations, very strong um, starting blocks. Okay, so that's building. And that takes time, and it takes um, you know it, it takes time, but it also it's a practical thing, um, and it takes work as well. So you've got to work towards solid achievement, um, and but it must be permanent. And that's what this card is always aiming for. So if you're busy um, trying to build something up from a, a wobbly foundation or something that wasn't standing strong to begin with, it simply will not happen. Okay. Um, there is slow progress. It's measured action. Um, it's applying wisdom and experience. Um, it's also about age. So this could be you feeling your age or looking at your life and thinking, I should have done this you know, or I should be somewhere else by now, or it could be you're seeing that in your children. Um, but it's it's almost like you, you're filtering that through and you're looking at that and and and, and assessing things uh, from a wisdom point of view, looking looking at uh, where you are in your life and thinking, I hope I haven't run out of time or anything like that. It's kind of a an age related um, situation, but but with that comes wisdom. Right. Always wisdom comes with age. And so that's a good thing. So apply that and your experience in whatever the fifth house issue is coming up for you at this time. Um, we have another Saturn card. Um, this is coming up in your sixth house. Um, so uh, whatever your, your, your this is your workhouse. So this is your house of your um, workplace, your work colleagues. Um, and, um, your, um, you know, your, your mastery of your craft, whatever it is that you do, you do. So if you're not in a workplace, but you work on your own, busy doing something, it's mastery of that. But it's all work related. It's your daily routines there. Um, this house is also to do with your health and your diet. And it's the house of pets. So now, uh, with Saturn, uh, truth coming in again, um, it's slow progress. Uh, this is a, a still wisdom being applied here, um, and it's also age. It's also age-related because this is slow-moving energy, and it does imply that you are gaining wisdom on something. Um, but um, with this coming, so it came up in your in your uh, fifth house. So it could be creativity-related, and that's coming into your workhouse. Um, 
yeah, you just have to see how that pans out for you. But it is, again, it's um, facing any truths head on. Anything that you've been avoiding or anything that's not solidly built um, will come down and you're going to have to start again. Um, it's also about um, experiencing restrictions or delays or heavy responsibilities in, in this particular house. Um, and it's learning to work with those. Because when you do that, when you work with Saturn, um, the rewards later will be great. So this is a testing time where you're shaping um, your experiences. You're shaping what you do uh, so that you can reach that self-mastery. Um, because when you do that, then the rewards are great. But it's a slow-moving energy. It's about patience. It's about growth, um, uh, responsibility, as I said. Um, it's time-related. And um, it's also, um, you could be uh, involved with a mentor, so having a mentor or some sort of authority figure in your life. So this could be almost like a, a male figure, like a fatherly figure, or it could be a boss or somebody you're working with, but they have authority and they have knowledge and wisdom. Um, it could also be a taskmaster. So somebody is really putting you through your paces um, and it will feel difficult and restrictive and um, almost frustrating at times, but Years into the future, you will be, look back and realize that you shaped yourself quite um, magnificently during that period, and it gave you a really good foundation. And that's what Saturn is all about. Okay. Um, when it comes to health and diet, just be aware Saturn rules teeth, bones, skeletal issues. So that might be a, a trip to the chiropractor or whatever. It also rules the tendons uh, and ligaments in the body. So all of those things um, are come up with when Saturn is uh, shining, um, shining in your sixth house.